Heaven's Middle video podcast number 19. Rage of Angels, Beer, Cigarettes. How I Learned to Be a Christian Journalist. Today on the Heaven's Middle podcast, we're talking about how I learned to be a Christian journalist, or what Christian journalism means. This was my career when I started Heaven's Metal Magazine as a junior at the University of Texas. And four years into that career, I uh, basically put together my definition of what it meant to be a Christian and a journalist. I pieced the two together. So, let's go back to the band Rage of Angels. This was a really tight, rowdy, edgy, powerful Christian heavy metal band based out of the Connecticut area. The only reference a lot of people come up with is they compare them to Motley Crue. Uh, different vocal sound, guitar tones, um, different style a little bit from Motley Crue, but it's a fair comparison. But these guys were hot. There was a lot of Christian record labels trying to snatch them up and sign them to a contract. They were hot property. One of the labels was the same label that Amy Grant was on. And they sent their A&R guy out there uh, to hang out with the band. And uh, the story, according to the band, was that Mark came out there and he smoked cigarettes and drank beer with them. And all the guys in the band kind of let down their guard because they were all worried about, okay, what's this Christian record label gonna try to do to us? What do they mean? What do they want? And, uh, and this guy, it was like one of the guys. And at the end of the couple days from hanging out with them, they were like, so what'd you think, Mark? What do you think? And he's like, well, you guys obviously uh, need to go to some like Christian ministry, like last day's ministries for a month, you know, and learn about discipleship and kind of clean up your act. Um, you know, if we're gonna put you out there, you need to be, you know, represent Christianity in a way that's gonna what, make us proud kind of thing. I'm paraphrasing. And the guys in the band were like, what blankety blank you, dude? You were drinking beer with us and smoking. We thought you were one of the guys and then now you come and tell us what you gotta do. They were just completely enraged. And they were like, you know, get back on the plane and go home, dude. We do not wanna have a business dealing with you. And uh, like a, a journalist should, I went to the source or the party involved and talked to Mark about it. And Mark was like, you know, Doug, that was a time in my life that was uh, kind of dark and I was struggling with smoking cigarettes at the time. And I would really appreciate it if you would take that part of the story out. And, uh, you know, I really don't want my family to read that and blah, blah, blah. So I had to contemplate, you know, what am I gonna do? That particular story was kind of the crux of the matter. That's why Rage of Angels did not sign with that record label is because of the experience they had. And uh, so to remove that story uh, would have been kind of neutering the story I had to tell. This was the cover story for Heaven's Medal number 19 in October of 1989, which was the first month I actually went full time. I was actually making enough money to draw the whopping salary of $400 a month from Heaven's Medal magazine to uh, pay myself for my services. So. I, uh, over the course of time, I looked at the, at the Word of God and tried to figure out, okay, what does it mean to be a Christian journalist? Because a journalist will pursue the truth at all costs. You know, cost be damned, they will tell the truth no matter what it costs. Meaning, if it ruins a family, if it ruins a human being's life, so be it. The truth is of paramount importance. But the Bible has a different angle. Um, Jesus in Matthew 18 gives a plan. This is a blueprint on how to confront people about problems and sin and offenses. He says, if somebody sins against you, go to him one-on-one. -on -one. And if that works, congratulations, you've won over a brother. If it doesn't work, go to that person two-on-one -on -one and confront the person. And if that doesn't work, bring them before the entire church. And, um, you know, that, that should do it. So basically, you see the heart of God in this. You can see that bringing this person before the entire church, which is humility, uh, which is humiliating, it uh, strips away a person's dignity, leaves them nothing left. They're just bare. 
that is God's last resort. His first plan of action is not to humiliate somebody. His first plan of action is to deal with it private, to cover that sin. Another story in the Bible is Noah, the great architect of the ark, built a boat to save his family according to God's direction before there was ever rain on the earth. People did not even know what the purpose of a boat was. He was mocked and laughed at. But anyway, after the floods came and the entire earth's population was killed except for his family and the animals they saved, which by the way, the Bible says they brought them up seven by seven. It wasn't two by two. Just a couple different accounts. But uh, it's kind of cool sometimes to read the Bible and see what it actually says. You know, the Bible says that Jonah was swallowed by a fish, not a whale. It doesn't say whale in the Bible. Anyway, after Noah got back to earth, he planted a vineyard, grew some grapes, made some wine, got drunk, and he got naked. And he passed out naked in his tent. And his youngest son came up and saw him and was like, whoa, dad's naked, passed out in the tent. And he went and told his two brothers. The two brothers had a different reaction. They walked into the tent backwards, not looking at their dad, laid a blanket over him to cover his nakedness. That's the heart of God. God is not all about humiliating us, um, treating our dignity like it's a piece of crap. He uh, cares about us. His last resort is exposing somebody publicly. So my definition of a Christian journalist is the truth is paramount and important, but not at the expense of somebody's dignity. So there's a balance there. Sometimes it goes to this extreme where somebody's life is ruined, but not every time, that's a last resort. So, I took this lesson into the challenge I had ahead of me. Am I gonna ruin Mark's life? Or am I gonna print the story? Well, you know what? Being publicly exposed as being a cigarette smoker, that didn't ruin anybody's life. So, you know, I went ahead with publishing the story as is, but, uh, I did it with a lot of fear and trepidation. I, I paused, I really prayed over this and anguished over it, and I realized, you know what, in the big scheme of things, being exposed as a cigarette smoker didn't ruin his life. So anyway, that was the cover story of the October 1989 issue of Heaven's Metal Magazine, issue number 19 with Rage of Angels. Hope you enjoyed it. I'm gonna try to do a, a few more of these historical memories. Uh, some will be funny, some will be sad, some might make you angry. Some will be interesting, some will maybe will be inspiring. Uh, just kind of culling from the years of my experience in doing Heaven's Metal Magazine and then HM Magazine for years and years and years, almost three decades. Uh, this year, 2017, is 32 years after starting Heaven's Metal Magazine. So anyway, jump into the conversation. Did you like the reflection of the beautiful uh, hill country? You might see the lake out there and see, you saw Felix, my cat, jumping in the background turned out to be a good idea. I put the camera this way because the sun's starting to set and I didn't want the light. So I wanted the light to be behind the camera, which is a photographic tip for you today. That's absolutely free. Uh, next time I'm gonna have to charge you for photographic tips, but you know, this one was free. So join the discussion. Talk to you soon.